Hello everyone, welcome to the Art Wagon. Today we will be working on metal. Like I promised, um, part of the, um, I'm actually calling this one, you guys, it's so exciting. As I was coloring it, I thought to myself, self, this looks like a dragon heart. Like this would be so cool to call it a dragon heart. So I will be doing a uh, dragon heart um, collection and each one of the hearts that I draw for the Dragon Heart Collection will come with a cute little dragon. How cute is he? Super cute. Yeah. And this one's called Cloudy Cloudy Heart Dragon. He's so super cute. I love him. So, yeah, each heart, um, each dragon heart will come with a dragon. So... As I promised, I would do um, a metal video on how to do metal. This one I tried to do more of a coppery gold. It's really pretty. I think that came out really good, so we're going to go over that. And then this side, I decided to do more like a pewter color. And uh, it's like a slate color, like a slate blue pewter color really pretty and then I've been working on the middle part of the actual heart itself it's coming out so awesome very excited about this and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the background yet I might use pastels on it or I might just paint it so let's go to it all right so first of all let's make sure we're in where we need to be let's go with the um Let's do the pewter first. And what I did first with that was I used slate gray in the Prisma colors. And I went over the whole entire swirly. We'll just call these swirlies. So I'm going to go over the whole entire thing with that slate gray. Okay, I hope everybody likes this collection. I like baby dragons. I like dragons, period. But I thought this was kind of neat. I was watching that uh, that movie Dragon Heart with my son the other night, and I was I was coloring the middle of this, and I thought to myself, self, Dragon Heart, yes, this would be so cool as a Dragon Heart. Not a real Dragon Heart, but like the gem. Dragon heart gem. That the dragons like they watch over. They protect. Okay, so now that we've got the slate gray on there, we are going to use the non photo blue. Okay, also Prisma Colors. And these are my go-to's, as you all know, that I've been using for like years. Um, my kitties are getting mad at each other, so if you hear growling in the background, it's my female fighting with my male. Yeah, Maggie and Maggie and Ace, those are their names. So I call her Mags, and of course I call him Ace. You can't get any. <laughs> My husband says, well, Maggie has a has a nickname. I call her Maggie Mags. And I said, well, Ace is Ace. And so he's a big kitty. He's a main they're both Maine Coons. But he's a lot bigger than she is. Alright, so I took that uh, non photo blue and I just gave the sheeting of non-photo blue just around the edges of the swirly. Please don't try to get up here right now, kitty. And um, I just outlined it with that on the outside and just little areas where I want a little bit more depth. And then I really shaded like on this end here where you would see a shadow going into this other swirly. And this end here, this top part here, just a little bit of that. Okay, then I'm going to take this color, which is called 90% Cool Gray. It is amazing. 
It is amazing, you guys, how many grays are in the Prisma colors. It's like insane. If you get the 150 set, I didn't, I never realized how many grays are actually in the Prisma colors. It's like insane. But it's cool because each one has this different effect. And this 90% one, I really love doing shading with. Because it's just not, it's not too much, but it gives some depth to whatever you're working on. So I'm just going over that, um, that non-photo blue, going straight over it. Okay. And of course my dog is going to want to bark right now. I think the mailman's coming or something. She's weird about strangers. I love her. I have a boxer. Her name's Roxy. So I'm just going to outline it very lightly with this 90%, 90% cool gray. So make sure you get the cool gray, not the warm gray, the cool gray, 90%. If you go with the warmer one, it's, you're definitely going to get more of a darker shade, almost black. So we don't want to go there. We just want enough to where we're giving this a little depth, a little warmth to the color. Okay, because we're making pewter. And what's crazy enough is that, yeah, we could go and just get a pewter pencil and just do this. Or, um, you know, silver and something else and make it real fast. But I like to build color. I like to build it with other, other means. So I always like to think, okay, well, what is in the color pewter? You see blues. You see different shades of blues, darkness of grays. You see warmth. And you also see some coolness in, in it. Um, I'm going to use this, uh, speaking of coolness, sky blue light, just to go in and um, we're going to go over all of this. We're going to blend it all in, medium pressure. Okay, medium pressure. We're going to go all in, just blend all these together. Okay. And... Excuse the trash man, I guess, is coming next door. I can hear him. Sorry about that. Okay. So, okay. So we've used that. So you see that coolness in the color, okay? And then you're going to go in, back in with that slate gray, okay? And you are going to build the color up. Okay, medium pressure again. You're just going to build that color up over the whole entire thing with this light gray. Okay, just medium pressure. We don't want to go too hard on this right now because we're not done yet. We just want to go in there, give it some of that. Then I'm going to go back in again with the 90% cool gray. Okay, hopefully we're still focused and we're not all blurry. All right, so I'm going in. And these colors, as long as you're using these colors and you just build them slowly, you'll come out with like some wonderful um, pewter colors. I mean, like some real rich, pretty colors. Um, I've used this color combination on... Um, bricks like if you're going to color bricks and you want it to look like stone like a blue stone you can use this color these colors as well this color range okay so what I'm doing with this is I'm just going over the whole outer skirts of the swirl like I'm just outlining it very lightly um, with this 90% cool gray you don't have to go very um, hard with this one because you get a lot of color out of just going lightly. Okay, so we've given it some more depth and we've layered again, okay? Then, as everybody knows, I just like to layer. Like, I like to build my color. I don't like just to use one pencil and say, okay, I'm done, you know? I like to play with it and see where I can go with that color. I'm going back over with non-photo blue, just in those areas where I want more depth, okay? And if you've watched my other videos, you know that I love color. 
and playing with different mediums. I love using eyeshadow. Some people may think, okay, well, you know, why not just use pastels? I do have pastels. I have a lot of really nice pastels. I have, I don't have the pan pastels. I will get those once I figure out if I'm actually going to use them or not. Um, I haven't decided yet because I do like the powdery pastels. I work pretty well with those and, but I do prefer eyeshadow. Like I love working with eyeshadow. Um, there's so much more of a color range. It's inexpensive and it does the trick. So why not? Right? Okay. Now I've, I've gone over in certain areas with my non photo blue. So we've gone over the tip here, the rounded tip area of our swirl. We've gone into some of the middle areas of our swirl. We're leaving a little bit of white in this area here where it bends. We're also leaving a little bit of white here. Okay. Cause we want to contrast. We don't want it all to look like one huge blah of color. We need some contrast. We need our depth. We need our highlight. And now we are going to go in back in with our slate gray. Okay. Yeah. It would have been easy for me just to take the slate gray and go over the whole thing and be like, okay, I'm done. There's your pewter, but no, I don't do, I don't work that way. So I'm going to, um, just blend everything in with this medium pressure again, just blend. And if, if you notice that some of your swirls or anything that you're coloring with this color combination, some are coming out lighter than others. Some are coming out darker. That's fine because not all metal is the same, especially if you have it like, like the right here, this is basically like a brooch. Okay. A brooch effect. So if you were wearing a piece of jewelry like this, that had your goldy coppery color on one side and your pewter on the other side, if you actually sat there and you looked at the metals, you would notice that some are maybe tarnishing, some are maybe, um, you know, maybe got weathered a little bit more. Um, some were looked a little bit shinier. Um, not all of your metals are going to look the same. So when you color and you're using these combinations, you, it's okay to make it look a little different for each one. It's all right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with heavy pressure heavier pressure with that slate or I'm sorry, the 90% cool gray. And I'm going to go over, I'm just going to outline the whole swirl with that, with that gray, just a real deep outline. Okay. We want it to really pop off the page. This is, I mean, this is your preference. If you don't want to outline it, that's up to you. But I really like when the metals really pop off the page. And I love real bold color. I'm, I don't really color very like soft. I like bold, rich, rich color when I color. Like when, when I color, you see that I'm coloring, like you see color on there. Like I've watched some videos where I'm like, I can't even see the color and it bugs the heck out of me. Like, I'm like, you're coloring there for like an hour. You're watching this person for an hour and you barely see any color on the page. It's like, what am I watching? What am I watching? But no, you'll see when I color, you'll see that I am actually coloring and I use color. Um, my process like I said before, it's very unconventional. I don't like to follow too many rules. Um, this is the way I do it. If you want to do it that way, awesome. If you don't, and you can use the color combinations, create something new. I mean, that's what art's all about. It's not all about like, I don't think it's all about having to do everything the same every time. Um, I like to experiment and see what I can come up with, with different colors. And this took me a few days to figure out how I would do this pewter color. I'm like, I want more blue in it. So I produce more blue in it. So, okay. So for that, for that color range that we just did super easy, right? 
Let's go over the colors we used. We used slate gray first. Then we used non-photo blue, <clears throat> sky blue light, and our 90% cool gray, okay? Those are the colors that we used for this pewter color, okay? Awesome, okay. Now let's go on over to <clears throat> this side here where I used, I was trying to do more of a coppery gold. I didn't just wanna go with gold. I was like, okay, I mean, you can get a gold tutorial and coloring technique on YouTube anywhere. But, so I wanted to go with something, something different. So this is gold slash copper tutorial, right? Here we go. Now on this process, I am going to, just gotta remember what I started with. Okay, um, now I could have went over the whole thing with bronze and called it a day, right? No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna build. We're gonna build that color. We're gonna say, okay, what can we use to get that color? And let's use highlights and depth. Okay, so here we go. We're going over that whole middle area. Same kind of technique, just different colors. Using the browns through the whole thing. <clears throat> I think you could get bronze and open stock if you don't have bronze. I think you can. I usually get my open stock from Michael's. Um, craft store, but I think you might be able to get it on Amazon as well. The only ones I order off of Amazon um, open stock, it would be my black Prismacolors and my um, white ones, pencil wise, open stock pencil wise. Okay, that's the bronze all the way down. Then I'm going to go with an unexpected color, pumpkin orange. Okay, I went through a lot of different oranges because I was thinking to myself, when you look at copper, it's not just, it's like an orangey red. It's got mixtures of like different minerals deposited. You know, when you look at copper, it's like, mm, it's rich. And it, it just looks like, I mean, I love copper. I think it's very pretty. And it's got that red in it, but it's not like a real red. It's like an orangey red. So I went through all of my oranges and my reds and I found this pumpkin orange, or you can use the mineral orange. I was debating on each one of those. So I was like, hmm, pumpkin orange or mineral orange. So I'm taking this pumpkin orange and I'm just giving it that little bit of oomph it needs. I'm going in this corner here, giving it some depth there with that pumpkin orange. I'm going in the little swirly area at the top, giving it that depth. And just little like corners, like little corners where you just want that extra pop of that copper to shine through. Okay, so this is like a coppery gold color. Okay, so you want that richness to just shine through. Okay, so after you've gotten that basically down, let me see if I can get you close up so you can see it. Hello, where are you? Here we go. You see that? So once you've gotten that down like that, then you're gonna go in, you're gonna go in with, let me see, where am I? The chocolate, okay? Get your chocolate Prismacolor. You're gonna go over the top of that pumpkin, that pumpkin orange, okay? Just go right on top. Okay, right where you want to just see a little bit more depth, just like we did with the pewter. Okay, there we go. Depth there, depth here, just in different areas where you want to see a little bit more richness to your, your metal. Okay, <clears throat> then I'm going to go in with Oh, yeah, this guy right here. The sand color. 
Okay, sand, Prismacolor. And I'm going to blend all of that in together with that medium pressure. Just blending all those rich colors together. Okay, I don't like that grainy look, so I try to, I, I mean, I do use the white pencil a lot, um, but I also use the lightest color of whatever color I'm using. So if I'm using blues, I'll go with the powder blue. If I'm using more of, uh, let's say like this color right here, I'm using more of the gold colors. I'm going to go with the sand. I'm, I'm, you, you try to step out of the box from using white so much and you try to go for colors that have more meaning to the, the colors that you're using. Um, white's great. Don't get me wrong. I use it all the time, but I like to step out of the box sometimes and use something a little bit more to the color story I'm using, just lighter. Okay, so after that, you're gonna go in with Espresso. Espresso is a lot like the 90% Cool Gray. You could use either one. If you don't have Espresso, use the 90% Cool Gray if you wanna keep streamlined on your pencils that you use for this project. You can definitely just keep that one, 90%. Does basically the same thing, but this one has a little bit more brown in it, this espresso, like coffee, which I need right now. Let's see here. So I'm gonna outline lightly all the way around with this espresso, just giving it a little bit more texture to it. And I'm gonna go in where I had some of that pumpkin, just going over it a little bit, where I had the pumpkin, but darker right here because these are your angles that are like meeting in with your other swirls. And I just messed up right there, but that's okay. Because when working with pencil, we always know that we can erase. I love these pencils too. My brother gave me, my brother was a, um, a he was in drafting and he also worked for uh, Disney. And he gave me a ton of these fiber castells. I mean, they are like ancient. He had a ton of them in his garage in a box. And I said, can I please have those? And he said, yes. So I was super excited about that. All right. So after you do that, you're going to go back in with your pumpkin and you're just going to shade in those same spots that you had it before. Roxy, stop, please. And just around. Yep. Then you're going to go back over with your bronze over the whole entire thing. Okay. Whole entire thing. Roxy, stop. Roxy. Oh, goodness me. Stop. And then you're going to go over the whole entire thing again with your sand. See that? There we go. Over the whole entire thing. And that is your goldy, coppery, rich metal there. And then I'm going to do the background. I think I'm just going to paint it just one rich color. I think I'm going to do it either a real pretty sky blue or a green. A green I think would be really pretty and I'm going to finish up this middle part that I have the other video for this part one um, I have the video for this middle part here that I was doing um, at the end just make sure that you're going over the outline of the whole entire swirl with your espresso so it pops off your page. Go over it just like that. 
medium pressure guys all right so hopefully that was informative and that you guys really enjoyed it because i did and um it's gonna come out awesome i think that's your dragon heart the first one cloudy cloudy heart dragon and it's on my Etsy right now, and it comes with the cute little cloudy, cloudy heart dragon. It comes with her. Yeah, it's so cool. So what you're going to get, see, the one I'm, I'm working on right now um, is the pencil drawing of it. And the one that you're going to get will be in the Etsy will be this one that I actually inked. So, all right. Thanks so much for um, coming to the art wagon today and learning with me. And I hope to see you next time. And we'll think of something else we can do. Maybe we'll work on some backgrounds, some more gems. Gems would be fun. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.